Good morning, everyone. Welcome all of you to our Sunday worship service. As you all know, the MCO is extended for two more weeks until 18th of February. So we will continue to do recording for our Sunday worship and sermon. So just want to share a verse to remind us of how great our God is. When we know His greatness, all the difficulties that we face on this earth will become so insignificant. God is greater than any challenge, any obstacle that we face, and He will help us to overcome each and every challenge and make us stronger Christians. He will bring forth something beautiful in our lives. So I want to read from 1 Chronicle chapter 29, verse 11. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Let us prepare our hearts this morning as we come to meet with our Lord through this simple home service. Whether virtual or physical, He is so worthy of our worship. Let us give our highest esteem and honour to the Lord as we come before Him through our worship and through listening to the preaching of the sermon. So let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just want to commit our home church service to you this morning. I pray that wherever we are, let your presence touch each one of us. Fill every longing heart with your presence. Restore and revive the first love for Jesus in our hearts. I pray for the people who do not know you yet. Pray for hearts to be open to receive you as Saviour and Lord. Come, Lord, in your fullness and power and flood our villages, our towns, our cities in this nation with the mighty convicting power of the Holy Spirit to bring many to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are thankful this morning that we can partake of the Holy Communion which the Lord has instituted for His disciples before His death. Let us prepare our hearts as we come before His presence and partake of this Communion in remembrance of the great salvation that the Lord Jesus has accomplished for us through His death on the cross. Let us turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he took, in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he has given thanks, he broke and said, Take, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you do drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts before we partake of the communion together. So let us spend a short moment in silence to prepare our hearts. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread and gave to his disciples saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. This morning we can celebrate as a family this communion together and give remembrance, O oh God, of what you have achieved on the cross of Calvary for each one of us. You have purchased for us our forgiveness. And Lord, you have taken us from the kingdom of darkness to your glorious light, that we can be a shining light in this world to bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together and worship the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is our God of ages. Life. 
God, and you brought salvation to us. Yes, Lord, we want to worship you. Oh, we want to give you our hearts, oh God, to honor you, Lord. It's Jesus. Let's sing. This is my desire to honor you, Lord. With all my heart, I worship you.
Good morning. Good morning, church. It's such a privilege and honor to be with you to celebrate this Sunday service with all of you. My name is Kevin Jesudasan, and uh, I'm all the way from West Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, it gives me such privilege, and I'm humble for it's, and be and honored to be here this morning to join you in this service and to minister the word. You know, I want to thank the leadership of the church for having me uh, join you in the service to bring forth the word. Yeah, so today I want to just uh, introduce myself to you and my family. Um, I will as you can see on the, on the screen, my family, I have four wonderful children. My wife and I, we, we are ministers and we, we often uh, minister in different churches because we are more on a mission people. Our life, my whole family's life has been on a mission field. And, I, and we have seen God in a very powerful way and uh, we have experienced him in such a joy to just continue to serve him. Uh, today, I just want to thank God for my four children. I've got two boys and a, a pair of twins in between. If you can see in the screen, two of them are married, and I've got two wonderful uh, granddaughters, age six and three. Yeah, so we we love Sabah. We have come to Sabah in different times, and we have come on our own and uh, just just enjoy the presence of God in Sabah itself. And we know that East Malaysia is very powerful uh, for this time and season, for what we're going through, you know. So I just want to just give God the glory this time that I can be here to just uh, share, um, bring forth the message to you. So without, um, without wasting much time, I just want to just... Uh, entitled the message that I've prepared this morning, God is willing. I, I say God is willing, dot, 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 God is speaking, actually. God is speaking to everyone. God is uh, uh, making himself known uh, across the earth. And and the map behind me, it's real. We are, I'm in my house right now, and this map, is it's become a, 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 a a backdrop, not just for a backdrop, but it's a powerful message that every time we see a different place we and we identify a different place when we pray for that nation. And we have been doing that for the last um, one and a half years recently, more intently. And I, and I know that God is going to do something very powerful, especially in Malaysia. Yeah. So today I, I want to just... Um, bring before you this passage of scripture that has been speaking to me for uh, since the beginning of last year, Psalm 78, uh, beginning from verse 1 onwards. Uh, I'm going to just read out a few, a few verses to you, but the whole chapter speaks very loudly. I encourage you if you have time, um, not if, but when you have time, make time to go and read this whole chapter. Um, where it says, Give ear, O my people, to my laws, incline your ears to the words of my mouth, and I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. And his strength and his wonderful works that he has done, for he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers. In verse 6, it says, That the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Let me just begin with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you, Lord, as I minister the word. 
Father, we have come across times and seasons of our lives that we have heard so many things. And Father, we pray, Lord, even this time as we commit this uh, session, this time, this message to you, Father, I pray, Lord, that the word spoken from my mouth will not return void to you, Father. And I pray, Lord, it will bring glory, it will bring healing and restoration, Father. I pray, Lord, that every heart listening on, Lord, will 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 know, Lord, that there is a sense of your presence in our in our lives, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the word uh, will come alive in each one of us, Father, and I pray, Lord, every home, every room, Lord, will speak of your glory, Father, this time. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as I read this passage of Scripture just now, I'm sure, you know, that this message will bring some clarity in, in everyone. Uh, this passage of Scripture speaks loudly to me because, you know, it tells very clearly that you know, we have heard things from our parents. We have heard things from our uh, grandparents. We've probably heard things from our aunties and uncles and all, uh, all the Nenet Moyang and everybody like that. And, and, and things have shaped us. These stories have shaped our lives. These experiences have shaped who we are today. And, uh, you know, as we, we bring across our life to just to experience what God is doing in this time and season, you know, God is doing a wonderful thing in our lives. Yeah. Um, let me just, you know, bring back this, the title to the, to my message. God is willing. Are we willing to move? Are we willing to hear him? Are we willing to, to make him known in our lives? You know? Um, so today, let me just, um, uh, highlight this few points and I would like to uh, encourage you to read from Hebrews uh, from the book of Hebrews so if you have your Bibles with you um, please uh, turn to the book of Hebrews and we'll read some passage of scripture and I'll highlight them um, the powerpoints will be up for you so that you can actually read the text and uh, know the points that I've highlighted to you. So Hebrews chapter 1, it says, um, Hebrews chapter 1, it says, I'm reading from verse 1 and 2. God who has, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time, passed to their fathers by their prophets. You know, we have heard, uh, we have seen in the scriptures how many times that um, the word of God has been manifested, brought forth uh, to, ev to everyone in the Bible times. You know, we have seen how the word has been, has spoken and been alive in each one. Yeah. So in the past, you know, forefathers, we've seen prophets in many times in various ways that the la about speaking about the last days, speaking about what's happening today, you know, and the expression of God's, uh, that, that many times is so powerful, you know. We have often heard it, that the end of days is coming. But we, have, we, we don't know what to expect. We don't know what, whether, because we're not, we have not experienced it before. We have not seen it happen before. We have not, we have not tasted. We have not even breathed on it before. But what is God saying to us today? In verse 2, he says, it, he says, has in, in verse 2, he says, and has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heirs over all things, through whom he has made the world. You know, God is speaking in the present time. In the last days we have heard of, in the last days he has spoken to us by his son. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2, when Jesus came to earth, God spoke with the ultimate word. You know, the ultimate word was so powerful, was so powerful. And that's what we have today. The ultimate word is in our hands. And uh, the supremacy of Jesus Christ is spoken and we hold that. In our hearts, we hold that supremacy. We hold that identity of who we belong to in our hearts. But sometimes most of us, 
we take things for granted. We take things uh, so easy going, you know, we don't realize how precious that identity is. Moving on, you know, I entitled that, uh, that first topic as God speaks in a progressive manner. The second point is God speaks in a crucial manner. God's word is important, all right? In this section, he says, God speaks in a crucial manner. There are two points here. He says, God's word is important. We must pay careful attention. We must pay careful attention. Therefore, to what we have heard, do not drift away. Do not drift away. Let me read from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we must give the most earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away, you know, lest we drift away. Wow. You know, it's so uh, crucial how important it is that we do not drift away from what is being uh, ministered and shared. Even as time goes by, we take, you know, I shared just now that sometimes we take things so lightly, so so lightly that we don't, we take things for granted. We take God's presence for granted. Yeah. In verse 1, it says, in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, um, you know, that we must not drift away. God in God's eternal message is so important that we cannot, we cannot ignore him. All right. The second part of this, where it says God's word is certain, is a certain word. It's a certain, that means it's, it's, it's a sure word, all right? For the message is spoken by angels, was binding in every violation and disobedience, received in his judgment how we escape, we ignore such a great salvation. You know, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2 and 3 onwards, it says, When God spoken in ancient days by angels, the words were certain. You know, it was not a miss. It was not something that we take things for granted. But it was very certain that when the angels spoke, it was, a, it was very sure. It was a very sure word that came from the Lord. Yeah, when God told the angels to announce the judgment, the judgment came. Yeah, God's word was certain. Surely if, if the word through angels was certain, there would be a greater note and certainty with the Son of God. You know, church, this morning, as we just be mindful that God has spoken his word, that the judgment of days will come, all right? The end of days will come, and, and we will be judged for everything. Right? So... Why am I sharing this with you today? Because God is willing. God is willing to change us, mold us, shape us. Are we allowing him to? Are we, are we coming to his presence to say, God, saturate our hearts. Saturate our hearts. Are we, are we changed in, in, in the image of who, um, who he wants us to be? Remember, we have his identity. We have his image that was passed down. Uh, we have his uh, credentials as sons of God, all right? So let, let me just uh, continue on. In Hebrews chapter 3 onwards, in Hebrews chapter 3, it says, God speaks in entreating manner. As, all right? Yeah, I'll read from verse 7 onwards to you. Uh, just give me a moment here. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Okay, as in the rebellion in the days of trials in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works for 40 years. Now, I, you know, I'll, I'll just take a pause here. You know, when, when the Israelites were stubborn, they, they were just encamped around for 40 years and how they had to be led out to a nearby place. You know, I won't go into the details because of time, but I, I believe that some of us may be going through struggles, may be going through uh, challenges. My encouragement to you is connect with God. 
connect with God, you hear from Him, and He will direct your course. He will He will order your steps. He will make your He will align every everything for you. But we have got to be listening to what He is saying to all of us. Yeah, Hebrews chapter chapter three verse twelve onwards. It says here, it says God compassionately speaks to us in verse twelve. It says, "Beware, brethren, lest there." Be any one of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You know, verse 12 and 13 speaks very loudly that, the, that this passage of Scripture talks about the Holy Spirit God compassionately speaks to his people. You know, he uses the Holy Spirit. He uses each one of us to come and minister, to encourage and to be a blessing. Set our hearts right and we, we can set up others. We can help others build their lives too. That's what it's saying. You know, if, if we have unbelieving hearts, you know, just, just imagine where it will go. I, 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 I'm mindful about that. Top, the, the first passage from Psalm 78 it talks about what are we telling our next generation of people? What are we saying? What stories do, will they carry when they, when they hear of the, the stories that they have heard from us? You know, God wants to, believing hearts, He wants earnest, uh, earnest He earnestly appeals for, for each one to encourage one another daily. As long as it is called today, in verse 3, verse 13, so that we will not be hardened by sins of deceitfulness. You know, deceitfulness is so, 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 it, it's so wrong. It's so wrong. But let me just go on in my fourth point. It says, God speaks in powerful manner. God's word, in, in this point, it says, God word, God's word has the ability to show the inner life of a person. You know, the Word of God is so, so powerful. God's Word uh, speaks life. God's Word brings us comfort. God's Word brings us encouragement. Reach out to Him as you, as you read to Him. Read from, him, from the Word. God's Word has the power of a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing souls and spirit. It's taken from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. I won't go into the whole passage of, uh, of that scripture, but I know this, this is a very powerful that some of us remember and memorize this passage of scripture. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts, the attitude of the heart. God's word has the power. It has the power. Let me tell you that, you know, the Holy Spirit combined with the Word of God, combined with what God is doing today, it has no boundaries. God's power has no boundaries, no limitation. In fact, I believe that He is accelerating every move He has planned for every one of us. He's he's making things even faster. He's making him he's making himself known in our in our lives. Is whether we are willing to listen, to willing to know that he is actually very close to each one of us. He's actually there with you right now. It's scary, but it's it it it's such it's it's such uh, a reminder. It sets our course right. You know, as I bring back the message today to all of us today, you know. I, I've heard of stories that my, my parents or my grandparents have told us, you know, and how it has impacted my life. You know, and I believe it's the same like all of us. It has shaped us. It has made us who we are. And he has turned the course of who we are supposed to be. Now, God has actually planned for everyone. You know, are we willing to move? Are we willing to change? Are we willing to set our course right in his tracks in his alignment are we willing to say god 
take us to another level, take us to where you want us to be, take us to where you have uh, destined our lives so that we can be fruitful, so that we can be blessed, so that we can turn the course of time right now. You know, I, I'm here speaking to myself too in this time. I know God has done things for me and sometimes I'm stubborn. Sometimes I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't listen to him. You know, when he says move, I don't move. And he says, don't go. I go, you know, without, without realizing that actually he has stopped, put a stop, put a close to that door. You know, in Isaiah chapter 22, 22 says that, let me, let's, let's all turn to that passage of scripture today. This, this is what the Lord is actually saying to each one of us today. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. Let's go there. It says, the keys of the house of David I will lay upon his shoulder, for he shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. You know, God has given us the keys. The keys so that we can actually do what he wants us to do. God didn't give us a lock. God gave us a key. Okay, He allows us to hold that key and he says, okay, go to that, go to the lock. And if that lock opens with the key, okay, it has to be a right key, right? It has to be a right key. Now, let me explain this to you. God has given us the keys to the kingdom. All right. God has given us keys that we can ex fulfill the destiny that God has planned for each one of us. Are we holding the right keys? Are we are we uh, approaching the right lock to unlock? God's blessing in our lives. You know, this, this, this message comes to us as a reminder. God has set a, a, a treasures for us in heaven. You know, but before we get there, let us experience God. Let us experience what he has planned for us here on earth. Because here on earth is where he wants us to connect with one another. He wants us to be a light in, in the community. He wants us to do our part so that his name is made known. His name is glorified, not just through our, our own household, but our neighbors, the people who are connected to us, the people who are, who are, who are being blessed by us. They, they, he wants us to just reach out to them and minister to them. So today, even as I come to a close of my message today, take a few minutes. Let's take a few minutes and reflect on what God is saying to us now. He's reminding some of us today some things he has spoken to us. I, I'm just taking, taking a few minutes here right now. I want you to just, uh, you know, be reminded that God has spoken to us. We have experienced testimonies after testimonies, blessing after blessing from him. What has he been doing in our lives? You know, what are, what are, what, what are we going to say to our children? How God has blessed us, how has transformed us, how has God renewed us? God, how we have experienced his blessing in each one of us. Today, I challenge you today to respond rightly, okay? Rightly to his calling, rightly to what he's saying to all of us, rightly to what he wants to do in our life. You know, I challenge you today, God is doing a new thing. Are we ready for the new thing? It's not something where it's uh, uh, something in the past, but each one of us is experiencing a new thing. You know, your new thing is different from my new thing. Your, 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 your family's new thing is different from your neighbor's new thing. You know, so I believe God is doing something new in each one of us, in each one of your family. And we, as we are listening on today, as we, you know, I believe God is going to do something very, very powerful in each one of us today. So I just want to just... Uh, Take a few minutes here, uh, respond rightly to him. You know, as we spend time, the next few minutes, in your as you're sitting down in your homes or if you're, if you're walking around right now, 
just take a pause, take a few minutes to just pause for a few minutes and just say, God, have I done things which are right in your eyes? Have I been stubborn? Have I, have I responded rightly in your call? You know, today, I want to just take this time to challenge you. Respond back to him. He's calling you. He's speaking to you. He's doing something. Are we willing? Are we willing to change? Are we willing to move? Are we willing to go? Are we willing to, 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 to lead? Are we willing to, to do something for his glory? Not for our own glory, but for his glory. Today, church, I thank you. I thank you for this time. I thank you for, for what God is doing in everything. I thank you for what God is doing. You know, that timer there is just, it's set as a reminder for me that I don't over speak, you know. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, I, I know, you know, um, we, what God is doing right now. You know, we, we go on, on online every, you know, e almost every day we are doing some meetings or some trainings or speaking or just, just being a testimony of encouragement and whatnot, you know. And sometimes we, if we don't put a limit on this, uh, we can go on. We can go on because we want to just share God's testimony, God's faithfulness in each one of us. So as we clo come to a close of this message, um, you know, when you have time, read the text from Psalm 78 and take some time to reflect on the, some of the points. Let me just reflect on those points again. God's uh, progressive, God speaking progressively, okay? Number one. Number two, God speaks in, crucial, in a crucial manner, all right? Um, it's the other one. And it says, God speaks in God speaks in entreating manner and the next one is God speaks in a powerful manner so God's grace be upon each one of us as we come to a close let me just work, pray right now father i thank you lord for this time i thank you lord for the words spoken father that lord every word spoken will not return to you to you void and father i pray lord that it will bring encouragement it, your word will continue to manifest itself in everyone's life lord we thank you lord for this time in jesus name amen amen god bless you thank you thank you again for having me join you in this service amen